If you are a normal human being, you have photos like that. It looks so malnourished. That is hypocrisy at its highest order. Like save your vitriol and your anger for things that are actually important. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just tearing down women who are objectively classy just because you want to make a fight about something could have been my exact response to you after you trash these women that you think had buckle fat. Anyway, so this new surgery that everybody is talking about is called buckle fat surgery, and it has been a relatively big topic of conversation since about December, I would say. Where is all the buckle fat gone? Social media interest in the removal of fat pads in the cheeks has surged. Here's what you need to know about the surgery. Okay, first of all, this is not a new surgery. She's saying we heard about it since December. We, as a plastic surgery community, have been doing it for over 50 years. I, myself, have been doing it for 10 years. From a plastic surgery perspective, it's been here for a long time. We've been snatching people from the buckle fat pad approach for a long time. Buckle fat surgery is where a plastic surgeon will make a small incision, I think it's like in the back of your cheeks, maybe near your ear, and they will suck out like this grape-sized amount of fat from your cheeks to give you that like snatched high cheekbone look. Okay, this is a couple key points here. Number one, uh, that's not exactly how you do buckle fat. Now, she's not a surgeon, so she should really know how to do it. Um, You don't suck it out, you remove it. I actually make a much bigger incision because I tighten that mucosa and muscle. So that's what I've added to the procedure, which is why I'm getting better results. Okay, so this is Sophie Turner before, and this is her more recently. She's so different. So you can see where her face looks more chiseled and her cheekbones look higher. She's still an absolutely gorgeous Bruh. woman. I think oh this my God. procedure just like sinks your face in and unnaturally ages you and prematurely ages you. So, okay, this is really important. A lot of people are using this photo up of Sophie Turner. And look, of course the lighting's bad. She's got Halloween style makeup. Look at the layers of foundation cake down there. The highlighter, I mean, it's impressive. Look at her lips, look at her eyes. When somebody has a lot of makeup on, you really look at the lips and you look at the eyes and they always overdo those. It's, it's outstanding. You can contour people to disagree with makeup alone. I found an article about this and I wanna read you guys a little snippet. So a plastic surgeon in Dallas suggests that the fat compartments buccal fat in the face do indeed diminish with age. He explains in most cases, you should not remove the fat in your cheeks except for a person with a really full face. Like this would be an example of someone with a fuller face who had a positive outcome with a buccal fat surgery. Hey, so what gives you guys? This is, this is our patient. Her first name's Allie. She's all over my Instagram and stuff. You can check it out for yourself. Oh, she loves it. It kind of like changed my life. I don't know. It just like changed my life. This is the girl actually who said, oh my God, you changed my life. So they're using her as a good example of buckle fat. This is the only patient in the entire video, the only person in the entire video that we know 100% had buckle fat. You know, I really had this talk with her. I was like, you gotta make sure you want it. I do think you can tolerate it. If this is the contour you want, you just gotta take all of this. You gotta think about these things critically, particularly when somebody's so uh, emphatic about, about uh, uh, one of their results. And buckle fat removal is the most hideous trend of the day. Nobody should do this to themselves. Can you imagine what these people are going to look like in 10 years? Well, if they had not removed their cheeks, that might have been what they would look like in 10 years because as you naturally age and you, you know, lose muscle mass and you lose some of your fat, like, I feel like that fat in your cheeks is supposed to be there to keep the plumpness. Like, it's there for a reason and it's all women that are doing this like men are not getting guys like this contour too it can actually be pretty masculinating and i'll tell you there's good literature there's good research on it the gen z guys even more these guys are all about it they don't care what people think they want to look good they want to feel good this is not great lighting which makes so much of a difference people are so used to seeing filters and editing on photos she is still beautiful like it does not take a brainiac to have common sense about a picture like that or to acknowledge that she is a natural looking woman ah you're, you're killing me listen she's saying it does not it does not take a brainiac to make a common sense comment about that photo being bad lighting and bad makeup. Ah, I mean, it's exactly, rewind it back. She's ragging on these people for a bad photo with bad lighting. And then now she's, now she's ragging on the other people who ragged on somebody else for bad photo and bad lighting. It's just like, it's all over the place. It doesn't make any sense. It's so hypocritical. That is hypocrisy at its highest order. This picture of Emma Watson went viral. She is stunning. I love her. I think she's a fantastic actress. And people on the right were posting this picture all over Twitter and saying, look at what leftism does to you. She's like malnourished and ugly and like unsightly. She's, you know, decaying because she's a leftist. Again, I will say it is bad lighting and an unflattering angle. Bad lighting and unflattering angle. I couldn't have said it better myself. Maybe I would have added on 
Halloween style makeup or too much contour, too much concealer, too much highlighter, you know, that would be my addition. But come on. I mean, give me a break. If you are a normal human being, you have photos like that. If you are a normal human being, you use the bad photos of them to call them out and say they looked bad. And malnourished, I think, was the term you used, or hollowed out, or like they had been starving themselves. Just tearing down women who are objectively classy and aging naturally because you want to pick a fight about something is not productive. Like, save your vitriol and your anger for things that are actually important. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just tearing down women who are objectively classy just because you want to make a fight about something could have been my exact response to you after you trashed these women that you think had buckle fat. Think about that. That's a really, this could be replayed. This video could play against itself to argue with itself. Women need to be uplifted and need to be reminded that you do not need to inject your face with chemicals or suck out fat or chop off your hair and cut off your boobs in order to be accepted. Okay, it's not about being accepted or doing it for other people. I'll tell you, I do uh, almost every patient I do. One of, I have a little pre-op quiz they go through and I'm like, why are you doing this? And almost all of them say, you know what? I want to feel better. I want to look better. And there is good literature on this. It's like when you dress nice, you know, you feel a little better. You're more confident. I mean, it's, it's obviously more of a commitment, but when you look, when you think you feel good, you do better. You are happier. It's, it's Now, again, I, I'm not saying this is a good thing, but it's fact. So uh, and if, if people do it for themselves and they do it for the right reasons, I think it can be a spectacular surgery. If you don't want it, don't do it. And if you're going to do it for the wrong reasons, don't do it. I mean, this is where you got to find a surgeon you trust and be really clear with your goals. Okay. All you got to do is subscribe. You're going to feel hotter as soon as you press the button.